What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and we're at it again with another video. In today's video, we'll be demonstrating helpful motions and gestures on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. Now these include lift to wake, double tap to wake, finger sensor swipe to show or hide notification panel, and slide palm across screen to screen capture. Now this video is featured on the Samsung Galaxy playlist so you can find information related to this topic quickly and easily. As always, we only feature products or services I buy, use, or am interested in. Now you can find the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 and related accessories at the Amazon storefront link in the description below. Don't have time to watch the whole video? We're now a podcast you can find on multiple platforms by searching for Pixels Cracked. And if you are listening to this on a podcast, you can find the more detailed video and YouTube channel by searching for Pixels Cracked as well. All things said, let's go ahead and get into it. So let's start with how to access motions and gestures. First, we'll swipe down from the top of the screen to access our notification shade. And then we're going to look for a gear icon and that's going to be our settings. So we're going to tap on that. Next, we'll scroll down to advanced features and then we're going to tap on that option as well. Now this opens up a new page on the right hand side of the display. Now on this side of the device, we'll scroll down to motions and gestures and then tap on that option. Now this opens up a new page on the right hand side of the device as well. Now here we have a list of motions and gestures for a total of nine items. Now you can see these items are activated with a slider. Now if the slider is empty, that means that feature is disabled. And if it's highlighted blue, it means the feature is enabled. So our first option we want to mention here is lift to wake. And that turns on your screen when you lift up your device. Now this option works with both the large main display and the outside cover display and with power save and mode active. Now when it comes to reaction time, there is a slight delay between when you pick up your phone and when the display turns on. Next, we have double tap to turn on screen, which is an alternative to waking the screen if you don't want to use lift to wake. However, as you can see here, you can have both features enabled and that would be useful if you do want to have your display turn on when you lift up your device. But also if you want to turn on your device without having to lift it, you can just double tap it. Now reaction time for double tap to turn on screen is faster than reaction time for lift to wake. And again, this feature can be used on both that large main display and the outside cover display. Our next option here is going to be finger sensor gestures. We're going to have to scroll down a little bit to access it. And then we're going to have to tap on that and that opens up a new page where we can enable finger sensor gestures. Now, just like the previous features, this feature is enabled with a slider as well. Now, although finger sensor gestures is plural, this feature only gives you one function. It allows you to swipe either down or up on that side key or finger sensor to either show or hide the notification panel. Now, although this feature works really well and serves as an alternative of having to swipe down from the top of the screen to access the notification shape, I have found myself accidentally triggering it just because of how I hold the device and my finger comes close to that side key. Now, once we've enabled this feature, we can exit out of this page by tapping on the back arrow in the top middle of the display. And our last option for this video is going to be palm swipe to capture. Now on Android, screen captures are normally taken by pressing and holding the volume down button and the side key or power button at the same exact time. Now this could be a little tricky to do if you don't do it exactly right. You may turn off your display or you may go the other way and turn down the volume. And that means you may miss your opportunity to take that screenshot that you wanted to take. However, with palm swipe to capture, we have a futuristic way of taking a screenshot and that's done by swiping our palm across the display. You can see that's going to take the screenshot. Now this is fairly easy to do, although it takes a little practice at first. So the problem with using this method is if you don't do it exactly right, you can imagine that you're going to accidentally tap on items that you didn't want to and you're going to change what is on the display. Also, this function works best on that large main display. Now it can be done on the outside cover display, but it's harder to do because that display is more narrow. And also if you have a case like I do that has a raised lip, it's going to be harder to do that swipe function on that outside display. Now, as you can see, there are other motions and gestures in this list, but I didn't activate them only because I didn't have luck with them or I haven't really tried them yet. So the question is, are you using any of these other motions and gestures in this list? And if so, 
How do you feel about them? Are they working well for you? And would you recommend them? So that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, please leave a like. If you're watching this on YouTube and have any questions or comments, as always, drop those down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now, there are three ways you can support the channel and podcast. The first way is to click on the Amazon storefront link in the description below. There you'll find items that I have bought or I would like to buy, and anything you buy from the storefront does support the content. The next way you can support us is just by sharing this content with someone who might enjoy it or find it useful. And the last way to show your support is just by clicking the subscribe or follow button. Now, liking and subscribing are important. Those are ways to vote on whether you like the video or the podcast. Liking and subscribing are also important for new viewers and listeners. If new viewers and listeners see likes and subscribers, they're going to think that the content is helpful, worth watching, and listening to. So that is pretty much it. And until next time, Leon, check in out.